going on, everybody? How are you doing? Mr. Bullet is rubbing up against me as we speak, but I don't think he will purr into the mic because he's off on a mission. He is looking for, he got a new toy that he likes. It's a squishy ball that I got at bowling, and now he's after it. So, I don't think he'll be participating in this episode, but who knows, he may surprise us. Um, hope all is well with everyone. We are here live from the living room. <laughs> it's like, it, it, ah, there he is, Bullet. Would you like to say hi to your fans? No, you, he wants to go up on top of his kingdom, so he chose table. He, he basically, uh, he, he basically is like one of those video games, like have you ever seen the game like Uncharted or uh, Prince of Persia or any of these games where you can just kind of go jump from wall to wall. Uh, he did that with with the tables. He went from table to table to his uh, his cat tree. <clears throat> uh, and now I forgot what the hell I was going to say. Well, shite. Um, anyway, um, either way, we are here. Oh, yeah, the fact that I built this whole thing in my living room from a coffee table from the, uh, the Amish. Went to a little Amish store, bought a coffee table. Uh, I know I probably told this once before, but, you know, for the newer listeners, um, and just put a boom arm, attached it to the side with a mic, and my podcast board, and we're just good to go. Um, I have posted pictures and videos of it online, so if you want to follow me, at my blurred opinion on tickety talk and uh, the Instagram, so, yeah, and I think it's on Facebook, too. Anyway, guys, let's get into this guest because these are, uh, well, this one in particular is a longer episode. So I hope you enjoy our guest. Thank you, everybody. Hi, everybody. We are back here. Uh, Not only one guest this time, two. And uh, I met these guys on Facebook. I was introduced to some... Facebook like group chat and people were just posting stuff so I just randomly threw in the podcast and if anybody needed someone to talk to I'm there and a few people reached out including uh this one person on here um Dave and he uh you know started telling me his story talking about his daughter and his own and uh we kind of got back you know back and you know went back and forth and got to know each other and uh lo and behold we become very friendly and now we're doing a podcast so uh, excited to have them on. So you two would like to uh, introduce yourselves? Sure. Uh, my name is Dave, and uh, I'm the father of Paige. And I'm Paige. I was the one diagnosed with epilepsy, and this is my father, Dave. All right. Um, yeah, and so, I, you know, I just kind of before we get into it, so we're going to kind of go into Dave's story for a little while, and then we'll get to Paige, but I wanted to say, because, you know, when I met them, you know, obviously he got introduced to Dave, and, you know, a nice guy, and, and just was so, you know, nice, humbling, and just nice to hear someone else's story and everything goes through, because he's pretty upbeat. Uh, he's got this, like, manly thing to him, and he's kind of, he's got some, like, aggression, but he's all, it's all good. He's very friendly. Um, and then you can tell he's just been through a lot. And then Paige, who's just kind of just, just sweet, like wholesome girl who's been through a lot, but she handles things her own way. And, you know, I offer to her friendship because, you know, people like us, we need it, especially at certain times and life can be very challenging. And, um, you know, that's why I love doing things like this because, um, you know, it's always good to help people, you know, close or afar. Um, and these people actually live not too far from me, so it's good. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, Dave, so where do we kind of, I guess we kind of start with you and, you know, whatever, however you want to get into it, whether you want to talk about the accident, before the accident, just kind of what made you, you and, you know, kind of, uh, you know, the change and everything. Okay. Um, originally from Pennsylvania, um, I grew up, uh, started off in down the Lehigh Valley and I was living in, I grew up in an orphanage and when I turned 18, um, the system, <laughs> foster care system, uh, gave me a taste of reality. Uh, I became homeless in the grade. I had a friend that lived up in the Scranton area. I, I stayed with him until I graduated high school. I enlisted in the Marine Corps, <clears throat> planning on that, having that as my career. But uh, fate and destiny uh, took me in a different direction. I, um, so I bought a motorcycle <laughs> while I was in the Marine Corps, and uh, I wound up destroying the motorcycle. I rolled the motorcycle. I broke my back and hit and pelvis. I 
shower with that. Um, held together by a bunch of metal things and plates. You know. uh-huh. Day one in life's lottery. <laughs> truly. I've never had a bad day of life since then. I've had rough days, but <laughs> never truly a bad day. I, sure. I can walk. I, I can feel most of my leg and feet and toes. And I, I, I beat the, the other options. Yeah. Um, Took, it probably yeah. took you a while to get to that point mentally. I mean, but you could. Cause... Yeah, I went through a lot of dark places, and um, when I was in the hospital, I told a story about what I was going through while recovering and, and the low point and the morphine addiction, the morphine they were giving in the hospital, and that place that truly wreaks havoc on your mind in, in ways that only if you go through that you can understand. <laughs> and then sure. when they pull that morphine away from you and you're at a low point when you're in that rough of condition, it, oh my gosh, it's, it's a horrible, 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 horrible thing. Yeah. I wish that on my enemy. Withdrawals, yeah. Um, yeah, because some of that medication feels so great and then you realize how dependent you're on it when they pull it from you and you're like, oh my God, the crash yeah, just, is, oof. You, I didn't realize how bad uh, shape I was in. I was in the ICU for almost a month afterwards. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, that's why I part of ways in the Marine Corps. Um, I was no longer able to be an uh, infantry Marine, and uh, so I wound up becoming um, uh, admin separated with medical, um, in the medical. Sure. And uh, it was at that point, I, I'm 19 years old. Um, I can't walk anymore. I can barely stand. I can't even stand anymore. I can't still can't stand. I'm almost 50. And. Uh, <laughs> I uh, was back at my mom's orphanage, my foster mom's orphanage, living on her couch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Didn't have too many options to, to, to you know do things in life, but um, pulled myself out of a, out of a low point there. Met Paige's mother a little while later. Didn't work out too well for for her and I, but uh, I wanted to Paige is the best thing that that truly ever happened to me in that respect. Um, I got custody of her when she was about four and a half years old. And she's literally been at my side just about every minute of the day since then. Uh, she never, she's never more than, you know, a stone throw away from me at any given point. Sure. No, one of the things I wanted to kind of was getting at is, like, what is it like for? Because I've asked this before, and you know, I've had to ponder it myself. Mm-hmm. Um, what is it like to mourn like a part of your body? Because like for me, it's it's a surreal thing. You don't realize you're doing it at, at, when it's happening. And then when you look back on it, you're like, man, that's just, it's, it's kind of dark. It's sad. It, it's also yeah. humbling. It, it, it's, it's a really good feeling yeah, when, cool. when you get through it all. But yeah, like what is it like for you to just like mourn that's necessarily your, your, your legs? Oh, I, you see, that's where my blessing came in because I, I was <laughs> Even though I was in the Marine Corps, I never really liked exercising. I never liked running. That was never really my favorite thing to do. It, it kind of worked out in my favor that I, I, I of all the, the conditions and discipline ailments I came down with, um, I can still walk. I, I can still stand for a little bit. It's something I try very hard at and I have to work very hard at every day. If I, if I miss a day of exercise, if I miss a day of stretching, if I – twist or turn in the wrong direction it, it, it's a very fine line I, I I walk because then I'll be laid up for the next you know week or so trying to work through this muscle spasm or these um, twitches or, or you know uh, <laughs> spasms are the worst thing I can call them but they, they're, they're spasms from hell we can see your muscles actually I think there's videos of them on YouTube where you, begin, you can see the muscles looking like a, um, waves on an ocean. And wow. that's a real thing. I, I should get some video of that on my legs. <laughs> it's quite the thing to see. It's very disturbing seeing your muscles do things that you're not controlling them to do. Yeah. But, okay. I tell people all the time who are like going through stuff like that because we, we, we don't get to see that. Yeah, sure. Especially some of us, you know, how many people are going to be like you and that are going to be up this up front about your, you know, you were just talking to me off the air just about shitting and stuff. And, and, yeah. you know, it's like, Who's going to talk about stuff like that unless you've, you've hit a place where you're just proud of who you are and you've just, you've gone through so much, you're a fighter. And yeah. it's great to show these things to people, not for attention, but just be like, look, this is what I, this is my every day. I'm still smiling. I'm still being a father. I'm still bathing. I'm still doing all the things that you do, except yeah. this is one of my challenges on a daily basis. It makes you who you are. Yeah. Um, 
tumbling there's every a, day. There's a Shakespeare quote that I don't want to butcher. I think it's from Shakespeare, but it's literally everybody and everything has a story and every story has an audience waiting to hear it. If not now and at some point. It's it's some kind of Shakespearean quote along that line, but it's the absolute truth. Yeah. Everything around you, the the chair you're sitting on, the the floor underneath you, the ceiling above, the the plane passing overhead, they all have a story to tell. And there's an audience waiting to hear that, somebody that can empathize, that's waiting to to relate to that story you're telling. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, like I said, I, every day I wake up and I have to just let my eyes fluctuate until it gets to a point where I'm, you know, when I have a good eye day, that's the thing. And I'm sure you have different days. Yeah, you have days where that are good days, but good days for you are bad days for other people. It's my good yeah. eye days are not good eye days for you, but they're great eye days for me. I love them. It, help, it makes me smile. I just enjoy, you know, my day more and my mental health is down. And um, But like, like I said, it, it's, it's humbling every day. There are days where I kind of go, ah, like I don't say it, but I'm like, ah, I'm not legally blind. I'm good. And then I go, yeah. no, this is just this is just my norm, but like my eyes are still really messed up, but I'm, I'm good. I'm okay. But like, you know, it's not, you know, years ago it was like, Oh, this sucks. I just want someone else's eyes or I want to die or whatever. Yeah. That that was at my low point. Um, Yeah. Just, and then getting back up to the point where I can take a few steps and I actually, I, I, (laughs) I do a little strut. I, I can walk in Walmart. I've had, I walk with my, like I said, I, I don't let on to most of the time if I can help it, if I have to go without my crutch. I'll use the, the, the cart at Walmart as my, my cane and I'll make sure my wife's within a few steps. Of me. But every so often uh, I'll get in a stride. And I'll take like four or five steps and like, I'll notice like, hey, I, I didn't have too much of a limp there. I, I kind of look normal for a minute. Yeah. And then it, and I feel that twinge in my spine, like, wait a second, you did what now? <laughs> get back to get back to limping here, Dave. Exactly. Yeah, I, I had yeah. this I had this moment the other day, and I can laugh about it now, but I was playing around with the vacuum, about the I was unwrapping it from those little things that you unwrap it from in the back, and uh, the the cable, I guess it just was going too fast, and the prongs hit me right in my good eye, and oh. all I could see was light. Like now I know what it's like what people only see light perception. So I'm like, holy shit, this is, this is, I was panicking. And cause again, if it would hit me, my bad, I wouldn't have cared. I would be like, wow, that sucks. That hurts. Um, but I was freaking, I put some eye drops in it starts to go away, but then I start seeing white flashes and all these things. Thank God. It looks like everything has come back to normal for yeah. me. A little panic attack and thinking how lucky you are now. And like, yeah, am, am I coming back from this one? Yeah. But, but yeah. to me, it was like what, what I've come to now to thinking is like, Oh, like that was, that was life going, Hey, don't get too happy. Stop singing whatever song you're singing. Stop bouncing around. Like, Oh, life is just jolly. Nah, this was just a, this was just life. Just put me in check for a second going, nah, just forget. Don't forget. This could happen. You know, that's why I stress the people, even people who have disabilities, like you're not like now opposed to having any other disability. You're like, I'm visually impaired. It doesn't mean I can't be in a wheelchair. It yeah. doesn't, it's, you know, it's not like that. It's not like, oh, I'm impervious to everything else. No, I can have anything else. It's, it's, it's very possible. So that's why yeah, I try definitely. to, I, you know, I try to appreciate my life. I try to appreciate what I have. And when I interview all these different people, it's like I have two people on the phone right now with two totally different conditions. I'm happy yeah. that I don't have either one of those. But I'm, I'm also like, you know, but I'm, it's not even like, oh, the, you know, well, I'm just so happy because I'm glad I'm not as bad as those people. It's just I have issues and I don't want other issues. And it makes me grateful that, you know, like I can walk or I don't yeah. have seizures. You know, as I'm sure for you, it's like you're glad you don't have vision problems. Yeah, you got to be an optimist. I'm happy for what I have and grateful for what I don't have. And I am I'm fortunate that I do have my senses, that I can have a feel of touch and I, I, I don't have – Pages of question and that I'm only afflicted with this. What gets me? I see, uh, well, I call these, I don't even want to call them, but people that do self harm. and Like, like cutters and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they, they, the people that do the, the, the ultimate 
unthinkable thing to themselves. Uh, you know what I'm alluding to. Right, right, yeah. No, you can say they, it. It's fine. Um, and they they see that there's no hope, that there's nothing, and that, or you just hear these people that are always talking like garbage, like self pity and self hate. And uh, and you, you ask them what's wrong with you, like, or if you do get that far with them, like, oh, my boyfriend's this, my boyfriend this, that, and they, they talk about all these other nonsensical things that, like, can you walk? You have a roof over your head? Have you ever been homeless? Yeah. And they just can't, and like, no, but I, uh, my credit card is bill is late, and my sugar daddy this and that. I'm like, whatever. Yeah. No, I, I, I get it. I no, I trust me, I get it. But as a person who tried to end their life, and yeah. again, and yes, and I've had major issues. So you you can look at my story and go, well, obviously, like of course you would have things thoughts like that. But I don't know. I, I also do realize the younger generation these days do have it harder than we ever had it in a lot of ways because there's so much thrown at them. They don't even know what information they're getting. All their all the people that are influencers, all the people they have to look up to are usually shitty people and are doing horrible things. And, you know, the, the school shootings and, you know, politics are all over the place. There's wars everywhere. I mean, people, kids are getting molested every day. And it's just, it's, I don't know. It, it I get it. Trust me. I get frustrated when some girl comes to me and goes, oh my God, you know, my boyfriend broke up with me. And it's like, yeah, I know, but that's not that bad. But it's like, you just kind of have to separate yourself from them because at some point you're just going to end up pouring your shit onto them and they're just not going to understand because they don't really understand how hard life can be. So I, I get mad at them, but at the same time, I also go like, what do you know? Because I, I've i already, even in the last five years, evolved you know, eons from where I was five years ago. So I can only imagine what a 17-year-old is going to try to tell me when they don't know shit. So... Yeah. You know, it, it's, I mean, look where you are right now and look at yourself 10 years ago. You're, I guarantee you, you might be, you know, the characteristics and everything embodies who you still are, but there's a lot that has changed. And because you worked on yourself and you, you just, you know, you now, you're just a better person, a better father, a better whatever. So that's why, like, I get it. Trust me. I, 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 I want to be petty and unleash on these people sometimes too, because it's just annoying because it almost like, like, it's just like you guys don't fucking get anything because life is so much harder than what you're making it. You yeah, guys don't really. have anything to worry about. I mean, at least not on our level. Thank God for that. But at the same time, you wouldn't fully understand what it's like to be us unless you're us. And I, and I don't even just mean disability. I mean, homeless. I mean, addiction issues, you know, whatever it is, you, you don't get it until you've been here. And, and so even though... You want to get mad at them, but it's like, unless you have that knowledge, you just don't know. So just live your stupid life and try to keep your nonsense from me because eventually I'm just going to go, really? You want to hear a story? <laughs> let me let me start in 1993. And then we just go from there. And then eventually they just look at you like, wow. But still, they don't like, they don't understand. So you just kind of, you just got to live your life. For me, my, my goal now in life is, or one of them, is this to try to be like a positive, like shining light wherever I go? It doesn't matter if it's the grocery store. I just want to be friendly to anybody. I don't care your color, your gender. I don't care what your issue is. I don't care how old, young. Just be respectful. Let people go through, you know, whatever the hell. Just be kind. Even if everyone else is a dick, you just try to be good because hopefully somebody goes, you know what, that person's trying. And why can't I? And um, that's my thing. It's just or one of my things. It's just... Because life is just hard, man. It's just it can be so hard. A few moments ago, you, you mentioned something, and I'm gonna I'm let Paige tell the story. But um, you, you mentioned about being nearly taking your life. Sure. We actually have some very personal experience, and Paige is gonna tell a story about um, my nephew, her cousin. It's my sister's firstborn, and uh, my father, Paige's grandfather, uh, two thousand nine. Tell me what happened on um, my sister's birthday was uh, Sean. Um, I guess my cousin didn't see much left to live for. He was how old was he? Uh, in his early twenties. Your age right now? He's twenty-five, actually. And uh, he was downstairs while everybody was upstairs celebrating my aunt's birthday. The fortieth birthday. 
when it was time to find him, he was in his room. His uh, heater was blasting hot air, and he was taking a ton of random medications, and they found him hung. Oof. Yeah. It's a rough one. And not, it gets actually darker from here, a lot darker. Um, that's just the tip of the iceberg. He... Um, he didn't tune himself and then cranked up the heat and he was in there for about 20 hours in about 120 degree, 130 degree heat. Um, he made my sister suffer. Um, he had, if anybody's going through this and they can hear my voice, it's whatever you're going through, it's not worth it. Yeah, people just need to, you know, talk. Well, my father was also going through some issues, and uh, three days later, he did the same thing, same way. Wow. And uh, I had to go down, and I had to dismantle the scene after they took him away, both of them. And I remember cleaning up what was left of their gore and taking down their nooses just hours apart. And it's, they threw their lives away. My father was nearly my age. He was, I'm almost his age now. He was uh, 60 something. Yeah. That's what I mean. People throw their lives away. And I've never, and then here I am. I get the gift that I can walk. I get custody of my daughter. And then people throw their lives away around you. It's just mind-blowing, man. Yeah. Because you think, I mean, you know, my mind was whole trying to shoot myself and the gun, unfortunately, I mean, fortunately, excuse me, had a lock on it and I couldn't do it. But yeah, I think right. about, I mean, that's maybe 15, 20 years ago now. And I think of at least 15 and I think what, how many, like what 15 years was in my life. There's no podcast. You know, there's a lot of experience that I, I mean, there's just all the advocacy and just finding myself and getting into shape and, and just all the things that I've experienced and just relationships and friendships. And, you know, at that point, I didn't have any friends. Now, I don't know. I couldn't tell you how many friends I have now because I have a lot. Yeah, um, really. You know, it's a permanent solution to a short term problem. Yeah. Whatever you're going to be worth it. It's going to get better tomorrow. It but, will. Yeah. But I, I do. The thing is, I also. Uh, I also don't ever want to come from like a, a place of judgment either because I've been there. So as a person who attempted it and, and, and really, ha you know, was all in and was like, fuck it, I'm done. Um, yeah. Well, I'm, 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 I'm happy that I, it didn't go, you know, didn't go through. But, you know, like I said, I do for those who maybe are at that place right now or close to it. It's like, look, I, I fully understand. I ain't making it's fun of you. I'm not, you know, I'm just saying you have to, that's why we say, find whatever, whatever. And you have a daughter, so that's like a huge thing. But like, uh, there are people who don't have kids, don't have friends, don't have any. If you have an animal, you have, you know, an album coming out next month that you want to hear, whatever. Find something to keep you going, just at least another day. There's Facebook. There, there's somebody out there. You know, yeah, there's just, a, there's groups. There's there's people all over the world. I mean, I'm not super religious, but go to church. Do some just just to be around people. Like there was a period of time where I was considering going to like alcohol anonymous type places, not because I drink, because I don't. It's just because I wanted to be around people who were struggling, people who yeah, were yeah. hurting. That's, That's all it was. I, I tried getting involved with um uh, parents. <laughs> Some kind of parent organization that for single parents. I can't think of what the hell they were called. Parents Without Partners is what it was called. And I went to one or two of their meetings, and it was just – it was an odd group of people I didn't feel comfortable around. And uh, I think they were all looking for different things, and I wasn't looking for anything that they were looking for. It was a nice group of people, just not my cup of tea. Um, but speaking of going to support groups, support groups are great. Support groups – are there they they are there if you need to find them there are people that like our support group that we go to um pages you want to tell them about that one uh I'm, I'm part of this uh group 
with who with people who are sort of like me with this with the disorder epilepsy. They're called the Northeastern uh, Epilepsy Foundation group, and they have these meetings every month. I try to see them as much as I can, and they have these events as well. And it's fun hanging out with them. Of course, though, the leader of the group lost her son a few years ago to a seizure. And a year and a half ago. I've also lost a few friends to seizures. Well, one thing um, that people aren't aware of is that a lot of people with seizures have, and it's something I, I, I hate saying, but it's called do death, a sudden of unexpected death. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It's probably the most horrifying diagnosis to someone with anxiety you can give, or even without, if you want to give somebody anxiety, give them this. What is sudden unexpected death? <laughs> what does it sound like to you, Tim? What is it, a sudden expected death? Yeah, sue death. Sudden unexpected death. Oh, someone who is soon to be dead. You're just talking one second, you're doing your normal thing, and then out of the blue, yeah. that's it. They're just lights off. Yeah. And you never see it coming. The people around you see it coming, but you don't. Yeah. And that's a real that's a reality of a people that, for, that have epilepsy. Um, now, all, different types of epilepsies don't necessarily associate this directly with the condition, but from pages with her, this is one of the realities of it. It's just out of the blue. And, you know, I, I've, every day since she's been little, I, I before I go to bed and when she wakes up, I, I, I say, you know, I love you. And in the morning, I wake her up. Yeah. It's the best day I've ever had with her. Right. You really got to each other's little moments. Yeah, my... My, I think I told you, my sister, she, she had seizures for a good while, and they used to scare the hell out of us because, I mean, there was a multitude of times, but I remember one vividly, and I think I shared it on here before, just I remember one time she was just going up the steps, and she was like step four, and then she just paused, didn't move, and then fell straight backwards, and just landed on her head and her back, and, and it's just like, it was the skit, because it was like an exorcist type thing, she like twitched a little bit. And then mm. just fell backwards, and it was like, "Holy shit! What was that?" I've, yeah. I've had that page. Yeah, it's Jeez, scary. Because because yeah. when you're the person that's not, you know, it's not happening to. I mean, I don't know what it's like for Paige or my sister or whoever, but for me, and I'm looking at it like, what? What just? The, the, you know, it's so foreign because you're like, oh my god, like your body could literally just shut down and just do. I mean, I know I have a lot of friends with Tourette's, and I know they have their own way of, you know. Uh, emoting, you know, sounds and, and, and twi you know, yeah. tweaking and, and moving and all kind of things. But like that, it's like I said, she just, she was literally coherent. And then all of a sudden she just it almost looked like she was possessed. She shook a little yeah. and then fell backwards. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's absolutely true. And Paige, she has a little service dog and he alerts when she becomes, when she becomes uh, predictable. Um, and when she's about to have a seizure, she starts going off a little weird vibes that I'm not attuned to, but her little dog, he starts really getting upset. It sounds like he's about to, to like, he's getting stepped on. He just starts whining and doing anything. He'll start running back and forth to, looking for someone just all the while pulling, you know, going back to Paige, watching over her. And when, you know, he's, when he does bring someone to her attention, he sits on her, and you cannot get him off. He, he comes to, he's like stuck to glue. Um, but one of the things she, she's been known to do is um, have a seizure while she's in the shower. Oh. So I have to listen for her to take a shower, and any little weird noise I hear, she drops the shampoo. I, I, I'm immediately, are, are you okay? If I don't get a response, if she doesn't hear me, there's been times where I don't care how old you are, what clothes you have on, if you're not responding to me, I'm coming in there. Right. And that's the reality of it. You have to 
it's like having a, a, the responsibility of a two year old. Hmm. I mean, you can't, you can kind of leave them out of your sight for a minute or two, but when you don't hear something, it starts to make your, when you hear something, it makes you worried. When you don't hear something, it makes you worried. Sure. Actually, I wanted to yeah. ask Paige some because, like, yeah, yeah. Talking to me. no, no, you're you're fine. No, because it just it triggers some for me because as a person with a vision problem, you know, my parents have been, my mom specifically has been very overprotective at times. Not much now that I'm an adult and I live on my own and stuff, but you know, she would you know constantly be like, "Oh, can you do this? Can you do that?" And it's like, "Mom, just back off." Now, in your case, it could be a life or death situation, so it's a little different. Um, yeah. But yeah, for Paige, like, what is it like when you do drop the shampoo bottle or or something, and you're not having a seizure, and your dad bugs you, and because you don't want to think everything in your life is about a seizure, but at the same time, it could be, and you know your dad means well, he he loves you, and he he's just being protective, but there are times you're just like, Dad, back off, like I literally just dropped the soap. Yeah, sometimes stresses me out get remind being reminded of it I, and i know he's just trying to look out for me he's trying to be there when i'm at my weakest state but there are times where i feel like he's being a little overprotective and that he needs to know that i am going to be able to try my hardest to get through this sure is it like, is any time you drop something, like like he's talking about in the shower, like if you drop the soap, do you immediately just get anxious knowing he's about to yell? I actually stop him before he even says, oh, okay. <laughs> like, if I drop something, if I make a loud noise, I'm like, like, Dad, don't worry, I'm not having a seizure, I'm okay, I just accidentally dropped it, and he's like, oh, okay, thank you for letting me know. I got you. Yeah, because that's something I say a lot. That a lot of what we struggle with is independence, and you know you're tw- you know 25 now, and you still live with your dad, and that's perfectly fine. You have logical reasons for that, but we we struggle so hard to find independence, and when we sometimes have to like for me, I can't drive, so I have to rely on someone to drive me places, unless I take yeah. transportation. So it it's hard because as a tw- as a 35 year old man, you know I'm trying to be like yeah I. I pay my own bills because people don't expect us to do these type of things. And so when we accomplish stuff, because our ceiling is so low to the world, because it's like, oh, well, you do this, so you're this, so you can't do that. And it's like, no, not necessarily. There are things I can't do, like I said, driving. But, you know, yeah, go ahead, buddy. Tim, I used to be a, uh, uh, I still have my CDL, and I used to be a CDL instructor. And even though Paige does not have her driver's license, I know there are areas, and if you'd ever be interested in a safe area, I'd let you behind the wheel. I, I know there's a safe area, and I know how to, my truck can put in low gear. If it gives you the feeling of, of freedom and independence to do something like that, just like Paige does. She doesn't go very far. She doesn't go very fast, and it's always under my direct thing. I, I'd be willing to help you out. <laughs> so... <laughs> In a closed course environment under under strict safety conditions, right, right. I, I'd be willing to, to to help you out if you want to do that sometimes. I got you. No, I think like I said, it's just my eyes aren't good enough. I just don't trust it anyway. It's okay. not like I'm not I'm not telling like people aren't convincing me that I can't do it. Trust me. No, you can I just know. You, want. you can do anything you want. Yeah, I just know. Like trust me, I'm just hoping Teslas continue to go further and further to the point where we don't need a driver's license and just have a car drive me around. I'm good with that. Um, oh my god. Yeah, I'm, I, still, I still don't like driving. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. It's instructor, and I hate driving. Oh my gosh, I hate the people on the road. It's not my driving on trust; it's everybody else's. Right. Everybody, everybody else, I did not teach. <laughs> sure. No, I mean it is what it is. I'm just hoping that continues to advance, and someone just says, "Yeah, that's okay." Like, just eventually, they're just going to be readily available for everybody, and visually impaired and blind, or people in wheelchairs or whatever, can just get in them and go wherever the hell they want and they can own one and they, they just it drives them places uh, what that, that's what they want to ask you someone with, without sight like sight is so much a part of driving i can drive without hearing i can drive without say without smell or taste or, or you know the sense of touch but you can't drive without sight and with me as someone with anxiety and who has a bit of ocd 
how the hell do you do it? Just get in a car and feel the sensation, to feel the momentum. What go, what goes through your mind? Well, because I can still see some that helps, but also, I don't know. I, people like me who have tapped into it and have adjusted, we become more aware of our surroundings. Now, cars are different because you're you're constantly moving. But I, you know, when it comes to walking and running, I rarely run into stuff. I rarely trip. I rarely, rarely fall because I'm got, you know, even though blind and visually impaired people, our balances are off, especially if we, we bend over, we look a certain way. That's why, like, when I'm on a treadmill, I always hold on because sometimes I get overly confident and I realize, oh, that's right, my balance is kind of a little bit off. But even though it's off, I usually don't fall. Um, but, yeah, as far as being in a car, I mean, it's just, you know, and it, because another thing is, now, usually when you're you're in a person's car who you know, like, someone you love and you're around them all the time you just kind of go along for the ride but there are times where you're just like hey like i want to figure out how to get back from point a to point b and you know not get lost and you just you know start tracking and you look for landmarks and things and um and whatnot but overall you just you just like i said you just for me like i said because i can see some i can look out and go okay there's that blue house and there's this and so you just become aware of your surroundings and you just get used to things and you just kind of go along with it. So my million dollar question is, have you ever been in a car accident? Has someone ever hit, has someone ever hit the vehicle that you're riding in or the driver that you're riding with lost control or struck something? Yeah, I've been in one. It wasn't a really bad, but I've been in one. What happened? If you don't mind me asking. Tell no, me no, no, you're your good. Tra- you're good. Um, I, I'm trying to remember. I remember because my mom's boyfriend at the time, which was my sister's dad, he... He used to always like ran. I mean, like every year he would just have like a new sports car, like a, a Mustang or something. And we had this like low end like Porsche. And then when you're in Philly, it, I don't I don't know what it's like now because it's been a few years. It's been about eight years since I lived there, and I know it's gotten worse crime rate and stuff. But there was always oh. times where like the Fast and the Furious thing existed, where you literally would go and and wrestle or wrestle. You would race for for you know pink slips and you know people would have hydraulics and and, and nitrous in their cars and whatnot. Anyway, but it, it wasn't far fetched for somebody to pull up next to you and go room room, and then just that that's their way of saying you want to race. And because we we were in like a, a faster car, we said fuck it, and <clears throat> we were racing and somebody just kind of sideswiped us. Now it wasn't terrible. It was a light sideswipe, but it was still like we spun a little bit and it was nerve wracking, of course. Um, but it was, it jolted us and it was like, holy hell. But like me personally, again, I was really young. We were just, we just got some food that I was really hungry for. So it was like, it was like for a second, you're like, holy shit, what happened? (sighs) And now and then it just becomes, all right, can we eat? (laughs) So because I was like 13, um, too much. You had nothing else in, in life to compare to. You know, the, you know the true horrors. I mean, other than yeah. your, your no one got hurt your... really. I, I don't know yeah. what happened to the driver, but on, on our end, it was three of us in the car. No one got hurt. It was more nerves, maybe some whiplash. Um, you know, the car got a little beat up, um, but you don't care about it if it's not your car. Um, yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't overly traumatic. I'll be honest. And I honestly, I didn't even think about it. I mean, I've never talked about this until you asked it. So, hmm. yeah. Because one, that's one thing that affected me is I lost control of my motorcycle, and then I end up getting a job at, at, at ultimately driving a, a giant piece of you know, eighty thousand pounds, seventy five foot long piece of equipment, and I would go in and out of New York City. I know Philadelphia and New York City better than the back of my hand, and I'm driving in and out of Jersey, and, and being a big rig that never really bothered me, even hauling like hazardous material, and but. <clears throat> I, I'm a horrible passenger. Hmm. I cannot, if I'm in a passenger seat of, I, if my wife drives, <laughs> she drives when I have to go to the hospital. <laughs> That's about the only time she drives. Okay. Um, or if I don't need the vehicle, but I have to drive. I, I'm a, I'm an absolute horrible, horrible passenger. And I will sit there white knuckled looking at the speedometer. Like I was judging someone on how to and, drive a, a, a CDL, a tractor trailer. Yeah. And my heart starts pounding through my chest when I see people cutting them off and, and it, it just really, I have, I have severe panic attacks if I'm a passenger. I, 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 that's one of my biggest fears. Hmm. Yeah. 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 Being flighted. <laughs> I kind of almost wish 
I, I do get to the point where I close my eyes. Like when I'm going to the hospital, I, I, I get kidney stones once in a while. My wife has to take me to the hospital for the bad ones. So she'll drive down and I punch my eyes and I, I try not to listen to anything. Just the hum of the engine because I'm afraid of just going for a short, you know, three or four mile ride down to the, down to the ER. Yeah, no, I, I don't know, and this is just me thinking out loud right now, because again, I never really talked about being in a car, really, but I'm not saying it's not important, because it is, because I find that very inter- entertaining and just very interesting on your part, because, you know, it's weird, because you've already had, like, been paralyzed and whatnot, so it's like, you're kind of worried about doing more damage, which, understandable, but for me, it's more like... I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm overly grateful to be alive and I'm just like, I don't want to say that I'm on borrowed time, but it's like I've already seen near death and I'm not saying I don't want to die. I want to die or I even want to, you know, have more severe damage to myself because I don't because I am kind of a hypochondriac or at least I'm I'm on the on the borderline of being a hypochondriac. But you're you're just a little more in tune with your health, I guess. (laughs) But yeah, but I'm also just like. I, you know, because I've gotten my grandma's not the greatest driver anymore. She's getting older. She's ninety one, but oh my like, gosh. but she still drives, and she's still not a bad driver. But she has moments where she's not paying attention, and it's like, but there yeah. are, it, I, but I should be freaking out, and I just have these moments where I'm just I'm just chill, and I don't understand it at times. But I, like I said, I, I just I kind of attribute it to just nearly dying, nearly almost killing myself and then having a lot of horrible other things happen to me. And I'm just kind of like, well, it's not that stuff. So I don't know. Life's still going on. So I'm here. Yeah. Um, but again, I haven't had that one moment that just, if I had a really bad car accident or I watched someone die in front of me, even if I end up okay, I, maybe I would be in a really bad situation mentally when it comes to that. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Like I said, life affects yeah. us, all of us differently. Yeah, the cause of my seizures and epilepsy was through a car accident with my birth mother when I was little. I, she was drinking and driving one night, and she did not buckle me in correctly, and she crashed into another car, and I smashed my head against something hard. I think it was the dashboard. I cracked my skull, and I damaged my frontal lobe. So did you yeah. have a traumatic brain injury? Yep. Um, uh, my head was swollen. She didn't take me to the ER or the hospital. She waited a few days until it was time for my dad to come get me. And after he found out about my injury, he took me straight to the ER and the nurses and the doctors were all concerned, wondering why my dad didn't bring me to the ER the moment I got injured. And it was just so hard. But after a couple of years, my seizures started to get worse. And I was then diagnosed with epilepsy and it's irretractable, and I'm kind of stuck with it. Yeah. I have quite a few friends with traumatic brain injuries, and they all have something different about them. And yeah, I had to go get brain surgery a few years ago because apparently the medications that I was on over half of my life were apparently making my seizures worse, which was a complete lie. But after I got the surgery, I started getting headaches and other horrible things started happening. And I was then telling my doctor who I had back then that made me get the surgery about it. He called me a liar and then he called a adult protective services on me along with the police and I was put into the hospital for a few days and they took my custody away from me and I was a county arrested for a few months and a lady from adult protective services had my 
custody and she was just a nightmare. But eventually after that couple of months, I got every my custody back and I still have the uh, device that I had implanted in my head still there and I'm planning to have it removed. But for now, I'm trying my hardest to always look on the bright side and never uh, back down, just like the song. Yeah. <clears throat> no, you have to. You just do. It's. I mean, it, it, I, when I go through things now, it's it's now more I look back at what I have been through in the past and I compare them and I go, ah. I think that bad. Even if it is, it's not. It's not pleasant, or it's not something you know that's ideal. Something that I would like to be enduring, but you know, when you compare and contrast to your worst of times, it, it kind of minimizes everything that's happening, and it kind of takes the bottom out of it and goes, "Okay, we can we can handle this. We can handle this because it's it's it, it's not whatever it is that's happened to you before. You know, it's not that car accident. It's not that procedure." Um, it's not all that you endured, you know, with your mother or maybe bullying in school or any, it's, 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 it's not that. So this is doable. This is very doable. Yeah. You just got to look on the bright side of life and, uh, never, ever, ever back down. Just, uh, never give up. Just, uh, continue living your life at the fullest and, Always uh, no, say to yourself, it could always be worse. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, you have a perfect example of someone who's doing well and thriving with a disability in your father. So it's like you have an example of someone who, you know, we won't compare whose life is worse or anything like that, but you look at someone in his shoes and you go, that's rough. And it's, look how well he's doing. You know, it, he's still able to do all the things he's doing with that. So yeah. if you get down and you start um, feeling sorry for yourself, and again, you have every right to do that at times, but if you were to just give up on your life and say this is done, it's like it's almost like like an F you to, to people like your father because it's like, man, he is a perfect example of someone who's just an awesome person who's thriving. And for you, you're – you're doing exactly the same thing, but like we all could go the opposite direction. We all want to give up. We all have hit our bottom, but you are, you know, yeah. you're embodying what your father instilled in you. Yeah, it's a, it's a slippery, slippery slope. If if the, let's say if the hospital, if I'd stayed on morphine, if I'd chosen that path in life, or I'd become addicted to alcohol or some other substance, or if age hadn't come along in my life, I. I don't know how I have this, this or why, but it, it's that's a forethought in my mind that uh, be grateful for all the little things you have and all the people that make up your life for who you are. And man, just just be grateful, be humble, humble yourself, and but stand up for yourself. There's there's a fine line to walk there between being humble and having a backbone to stand up for what you believe in and take the initiative to do something about it. Like. Tell you it's about the signs. Yeah, did we tell you about the signs? Uh, <clears throat> Not on here, you didn't know. But I just want to say before you do, like, like I said, I think that's what makes your guys' relationship so great. I mean, yeah, daughter and, and father's relationship is very special. Um, but because of where you both have come from, what you both have, and you know what you both have experienced on your own and together, it 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 helps you to kind of balance your lives out because you know damn well, Dave, like. You know, you could have your worst day ever and want to give up, but you have her pretty face sitting there looking at you like, what are you doing, Dad? Like, the hell? Like, you, I need you. And vice versa. Yeah. Like, you give up, then you fail her. And you know, I know that's the last, there's probably one thing, and I don't know you that well, but I, I, I can kind of infer, I would imagine there's one thing in this life you don't want to do is disappoint her. You're absolutely right. And that, that's that's the, the truth and heart of the matter. But there, there's one thing a lot of people don't understand, and this is probably the truth more than anything. There's a reason why I can understand why Homer Simpson wants to strangle Bart Simpson sometimes. 
<laughs> sure, of course. Yeah. Not, he doesn't love them. It's just that, my God, there's always so much a human being can take. <laughs> right. I get, and trust me, I get it. I, I was a pain in the ass kid, so I understand. Yeah, but there's the episode where Homer, um, he why he goes to work, and Mr. Burns hands him, at the end of the episode, it's an older episode, he hands him the plaque, and it reads, um, don't forget, you're here forever. But then um, Homer covers it up with pictures of his kids, I think of Maggie, and it reads, uh, do it for her. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, that's really the end of it. You're doing it for someone else. It's, yeah. I, I haven't chosen this path in life because it was easy for me. It's because it was right for her, and I didn't want her to have a repeat of my history. Sure. It, that was, I, that's the simple of it. I didn't want my kid to repeat the shit I went through. And that's my driving force. Right. Kind of, yeah. My parents were, were such scumbags, <laughs> and they did Maybe I'm glad that you know, for whatever reason, they they did what they did and made me a better person. I like to think of it at least that way. I give them credit for that at the very least. Yeah, and your goal is yeah. to kind of make this place a better place. So you're trying to do what your parents did wrong and teach her what you did wrong, what her mother did wrong, and then hopefully she could take what she, you did wrong and what she did wrong, and. Yeah. You just keep passing along until hopefully, hopefully, this world is a better place. It breaks the cycle. Yeah, be the change you wish to see in the world and make it happen. Exactly. Take the initiative to do it. I, there are days where we do t- we do talk about her mother, and we're, we laugh at her. We, we feel sorry for her because Paige is such a great person. She turned out to be so wonderful and well-balanced, and it keeps me in check. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what I'd be without her, and... If she, she, I'm grateful that I, her, I get to spend all this time with her, and I feel sorry that I, I just can't understand why someone would just write they're off their own flesh and blood, write off their own child. It, it, people make their own choices for their own reasons. They have to do what they have to do, but I just can't understand it from my perspective. Yeah, but you also know, like like you said, passing on and, and breaking the cycle. I'm sure. She isn't the only one in her. You know, I'm talking about the mom. She isn't yeah. the only one in her life that has been that. She, I don't know if, well, who, I don't know her, but maybe her family or sister or, you know, friends or whatever. She had people around her, and it just became, you know, a lot of times addicts come from within the gene pool, and they know a lot of other addicts, and they just keep passing it on until somebody in the family just goes, "No, I don't want to," you know, partake in partake in alcohol or whatever, and yeah. they're just, "I'm done with this shit." You know, and you can, you can break the chain on it. Not even just extreme things. Like for me, there's, I take every little piece of my family and all the people that I've interacted with and I take all the good qualities and I try to make this cornucopia of a good person and I delete all the bad stuff. Even if it's people I genuinely would die for, I just go, no, I don't want to be like, I grew up in, there's some people in my family that are racist. I don't want to be like that. I have too many people that I love that are not the same color as me. So that's not going to happen. So, it, it, you know, and I can only imagine, though, like I said, I, I still have empathy, though, for those who are who can't break the chain because they're lost and, and they're essentially destroyed by whatever it is that's passed down to them. And, you know, yeah, yeah, it, 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 coming from my point of view, I'm still in contact with my, my uh, foster mother. I love the lady. I talk to her frequently. She she's my mom. Um, She's the only grandmother Paige has ever known. And she's a wonderful, wonderful person. A great person. An uh, example of a great person. Um, but the thing she deals with most often is recidivism. The foster care system, they create customers. It's in their best interest to have repeat customers to keep these cycles of broken families in place to keep them functioning as a corporation. They really... It, the day I turned 18, I was just a number to them. I was no longer the responsibility. I was still in high school. They had a new bed, a new client waiting for me, and I had to leave. Mm-hmm. I, I it, it was cold that winter. I remember that. It was it stuck being homeless for a little bit and having my friend's family take me in. It made me a better person ultimately, and fortunately, I kept good people in my life. But they create a system where it just never ends. They they enable these bad habits. They never do anything to actually stop what is causing the problems. And they're grooming the next generation to fill the rank of those that are aging out. 
for sure. I, I fully anticipated that that's what I was being groomed for in my situation, lacking the social skills that I did and the guidance and the, the necessary resources of a family and people that actually just don't give a fuck about me. Right. And I did my, but I fought like hell to keep Paige out of the system and out of the foster care and dealing with the county and on that level. I didn't want to be part of their business. I didn't want to be part of their, their financial plan. Sure. I'm not a number. I'm a human being. Right. So it's Paige. Not for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's get into the second. I didn't realize this has already been an hour and a half. This is crazy. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. I just, it's, I looked down at my phone. I'm like, holy hell, it's already an hour and 30. Um, but yeah, I want to get into the, the sign you, you told me about before, but you didn't tell the audience. So yeah. Um, the sign <clears throat> page, um, due to the issues that I was telling you about right that, back. <laughs> the government was giving us the, how I was county arrested. My father and I decided to make a sign that says fuck the government uh -huh. on it. And we put it outside on our uh, house. And a few days later, the police came to our door telling us that there's been a, a couple of complaints about the sign and that we need to take it down. So, but the, the chief was ultimately okay with. It. He says, you know, it's on your property. He says it's First Amendment speech. There's nothing violent. It may the, the Supreme Court in 1971 um, had a had a very big case. It was Cohen v. California, where a gentleman wore a fuck the draft jacket. He'd written that on the back of his jacket. And wore that into a courthouse. He refused to take it off, and he was charged for some uh, offenses. Sure. This case made at the Supreme Court. The, one of the um, ruling justices dissented that. Um, I'm going to butcher the quote again. <laughs> I'm very terrible, but he, and, the, and the essence of his quote was: "One man's vulgarity is another man's lyric, and vice versa. You may not like what." one person has to say, but it may be beautiful for someone else to hear it. Sure. At the same time, fighting words are not protected. You know, slanderous words are not protected. For obvious reasons, insightful words are not protected. Uh, um, you know, you can't say X is, I'm going to go kill X and O for, and because they did X, you know, you just can't say that those things are, are wrong to say in any context even or whatever you, you just can't say fighting words mm -hmm. but, but the government is completely free it's a blanket like statement towards the government it's a lyric we love to use sure so we made a sign and um we refused to take it down we got a letter from the zoning ordinance saying that our sign was out of ordinance <laughs> that we had to pay a that it had to be a certain size and dimension uh, they had to approve what we had to say before it could be submitted to council for their approval. The government wanted to charge us a fee before it was allowed to be approved by another council that would get the final approval, and that's if they were going to approve it. They, they created so many unnecessary hurdles for free speech. We, this is on the land we own. We don't rent. It's the property we own from the bank. We, we, we pay the mortgage. Yeah. Right. says we own it. We pay the property tax. A Jones it as well. That was wrong for the government to say that they need to approve what a person can say on their own property. Right. Especially given that the Supreme Court precedent of 1971 protects free speech in that exact context, if not otherwise. The clothing on your back is your property. The, that's the subtle difference right there. This is the, ha the, the siding of our house or the front porch of our house versus a jacket. But yeah, the same man. message. You'll see people driving around with, like, you know, Joe Biden is my president stickers oh, on and shit. And I, I'm not, I don't vote either way. I'm just saying, like, it's like, isn't that oh, yeah, more, I, a little more divisive? Because that's just going to cause arguments. Like, people are really passionate about shit like that. I don't, like, give a shit one way or another. But it's like, that's a sign that's floating all around. And it's traveling, and people see it. It pisses people off. Like to me, as long as it doesn't say "go commit crimes this way," yeah, yeah. 
Who gives a shit? Yeah. Yeah. We're not advertising uh, uh, pedophilia or, or some kind of heinous act or, or racism or, or, or whatever. Yeah. Or, or racism. Yeah. Anything like that or, or anti message. It's a simple message that a lot of people, because of what you just said there, I hate both sides of the party. I hate Biden. I hate Trump equally. And I hate anybody that else that they nominate because it's, uh, the office is bought and sold just like any other purchase you're going to make on Amazon or eBay or Walmart. You go and you make a purchase and it's decided already. And it's just a matter of who somebody else. It's all because they, they don't, it's the electoral government and the popular vote. You don't have, the popular vote doesn't mean anything. It's supposed to influence the electoral and then they decide. Yeah, we all know how voting works. It's, it's complete bullshit. And then you have these uh, these boundary lines that don't make sense. Oh man, gerrymandering. Right. Yeah, it's all. There is no voting in this country. Right. The no, I got gotcha. you. I just for me, it's just like we, we can go on a thousand ways in this, but it's for me. The point was, it's just you know, it, it's just it, it's a sign. It says what it says. It's not really causing any harm there's a lot of people that feel that way i mean hell he, there was a song a long time ago fuck the police by nwa which was a problem for a long time they tried to get them you know completely kicked off stages and banned and all these different things arrested and all that but it's, it's just like a sign cool. it says something yeah it says something and it, it is what it is but it's like you know people feel that way um but it doesn't say you know fuck the government let's go riot and burn shit down even though people have been doing that in the last past yeah. so many years, but there's no, yeah. And, yeah. and you shouldn't be doing that. You should, <laughs> you know, protesting is fine, but not violence. It's not going to yeah, get you yeah. anywhere. Yeah, let's uh, let the government here. Hey, here's a kicker too. Like within about a hundred feet of my house, and if you look in any direction, you can clearly see on my neighbor's property, there's a, a sign that's even bigger than mine. It says, fuck, fuck Biden. <laughs> and then there's another okay. one on the other side, side that says, fuck Trump. And there's another guy just within uh, about 150 feet, maybe 200 feet away. Um, he, I think he's, is, um, what's that one that says, let's go Brandon or something. Oh, that stupid thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but they, but they draw a particular, and these are all the signs that are just the same size or their houses are decked out with even more stuff within a hundred or 200 feet of my house. But they, well, we get singled out. Because we have a general statement about the government that's completely neutral. Yeah, it's a strong word that evokes a lot of response that a lot of people are uncomfortable with. I guess the, the argument that they're having is because we live near a park, within a block of a park. Um, yeah. What about the children? Yeah, but they also, the thing is, right? yeah, but like, the thing is, like, they, they're, they're fine with, like, fuck Trump, fuck, fuck Biden, because they like yeah. the divisiveness. They like people yeah. at yeah. each other's throats. Yeah. But like, fuck the government doesn't say one or the other. It just says fuck the government. And there's a lot of people who who feel that way. Yeah. Republican and Democrat, they both feel that way at, at times. And Very bipartisan. Yeah. And a lot of them want to vote the other way or not vote at all. But they're so locked in because this is this is something you know we talk about breaking change. A lot of this has been passed down to their family, and they say this these people, the old liberals, the old conservatives, and they fucking they like this is how you got to vote because this is they're all devils and they're all demons even though they're both equally the problem. And they just say, well, I can't let the other side win, so I have to vote for somebody, even though they kind of feel the same way. And fuck the government could mean, you know, let's just fuck these people. We don't want to, we, 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 you know, let's let white and black people get together, let men and women, straight and gay people, let people actually get together and actually fight a cause together and all be yeah. one. They don't want that. That's, that's a problem. So fuck Biden and Definitely. Trump is the same old system. That's just like, oh, you're just saying fuck. Even though it's a giant group, you're just saying fuck that. And everybody's like, well, yeah, a lot of people feel that way. So fuck them. But like when you say fuck the government, that means even bigger because that a lot, you know, they don't want people to be anti-government because then they, they actually would have to make changes. Oh, that won't, you know, they don't want change. They want to keep business as usual. Now, one thing, I love the country, but I fucking hate the government. I, I know what it did to me. I know how it's treated me. I know the system growing up through the government as part of its product. And what what's done to me throughout the years, uh, having to, to live off of welfare and, and everything else, it's not 
the greatest feeling to be trapped in that system, to be having to be forcefully enabled into it because uh, of just this is life. Uh, and it's not because of anything I did or anything I wanted to do. It's just these are the cards that were, were dealt to me and I've been trying to fight like hell to, to make a better hand. Yeah. It doesn't have to be that way, though. It, you know, <laughs> fuck the government. Everybody agrees with that. Sure. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, but you just got to keep doing what you're doing. That's what like I said. You believe in something. You just got to go with it. I mean, they're going to make life harder for you. And that, that doesn't necessarily just mean in this tip is specific topic, but anything. It's, I have my own battles here with, with other things. And, you know, it's like I have trying to get this major eye procedure and they're trying everything they can to deter me to not get it. And they're, you know, pissed off because I towed off their surgeon, surgeon coordinator because she was treating me like crap. And, now they're trying to hold it against me, and I'm like, this is a battle I need because this is life or death for my vision. So I'm going to fight it. But most people would, you know, a lot, especially in our case, we are people who fight every day, and we we have to pick our battles because we can't fight them all. And there are some we just have to, we have to just take the loss and go, whatever, it is what it is. But this one, I'm not taking a loss. I'm going to fight it. I'm not going to stop because this is something I personally need. And there's also a 10%, 15% of me is going, you know what? I don't know how many people these people have ran over or people like them too, these yeah. like in the medical field and how they've just deterred people and treated them like shit and said, no, we are not going to help you because we don't feel like it. And it's like, you're yeah. not doing that to me. You're, you're going to feel every bit of frustration that I'm going to feel. I'm not going to assault you. I'm not going to threaten you. I'm just going to hurt you in a way that you just didn't see coming because you look at me as the poor old little blind guy. What is he going to do? Well, I'm a poor old little blind guy with resources and a poor old blind guy who's fought his whole life to, to stay afloat. So you're going to feel it. I don't care if I win or lose, but you're, you're going to take a lot. It's like I said, when I said earlier, my, my spirit animal is a porcupine. I may not fully win. You may be a grizzly bear, but you're going to get a couple quills in your, in your paw. You're going to feel me. So that's what it is. And like I said, this has nothing to do with violence. It's nothing to do with, you know, I just, I want them to feel my existence because you, when you, when you, you know, try to disassociate yourself from people like me and you act like we don't exist and you, you treat us and put us down, we're going to, some of us will fight back and we're going to fight back harder than you ever thought we would. We are the, you know, we are the, the David and Goliath. We are the ones that are going to make you feel sorry for fucking with us. And like I said, this, again, stress this again, nothing to do with violence, but it's, you're going to feel it because you, you need to, because you need to get a dose of reality. You need to get a dose of medicine because when you come down to our level, we are, we get served medicine every day. So yeah. we understand what it's like to be that we understand what it's like to hurt emotionally or physically. So you need to come down to our level and be happy that you have these great jobs, regardless if you went to school for it and earned it and all that. But you still have to treat people right. I don't care what your social status is. I don't care how much money you make. I don't care that you're an abled body person. I don't care that you have a perfect, lovely family. All that is wonderful. But you should be grateful for you have that. Because one day a storm is going to blow down your house, metaphorically or literally, and you're going to yeah. feel the harsh wrath of life. And yeah. if you don't understand that, then you're never going to know what it's like to win in life. Because you're just going to be just a person floating around, not not really fully existing the way you should. And for us, we felt the harshest realities. And every time a storm comes, we, we basically already prepare to be building a new house. Because we know what's coming. and Or we just do like the third pig. We just build our house stronger so he can't blow it down. And then yeah. maybe we lose a little bit of our house. But we go, yeah, at least it wasn't the whole damn structure. We lost, the, you know, we lost the windows, but we're good. So we just keep moving. That's all it is. And and for me, you know, and like for you in this cause, it's like you just got to stay in their ass. Like just stay on them because they expect you to just go away. They expect you to give up. But it's like, why would we give up? That's one of the few things that we're good at. We don't fight. Well, we don't we don't well, give up. Yeah, I think it's probably the one thing that, that binds us, no matter what our condition is or our disability is, is that it's the resourcefulness. Because with you losing your sight and me losing my ability to walk well, you know, walk or walk well, and then the page with the the issues she deals with epilepsy, you have to be resourceful. You have to be strong enough to figure out ways around your disability. And when someone's like you're saying messes with you, we're we're more resourceful 
than someone who doesn't have to deal with these challenges. Yeah. Uh, who doesn't have to constantly think, where is my next handheld coming from? Where is my the next obstacle in my way? Yeah. Am I going to be able to take a shower without having a seizure? You know, just is these are the little things you have to contend with on, on a moment-to-moment basis, and it's always on your mind. Yeah, our yeah. whole life is, is predicated on adjusting. And, yeah. and and recalibrating. Yeah, you have to overcome. Yeah, everything. Everything is just. That's why I always appreciated that last Rocky movie, the very last one where he it's called Rocky Balboa, and his son is just, you know, basically trying to act. He doesn't want to take on the Rocky name because he's he he, he doesn't want to be Rocky's son. He just wants to be his own individual, which is understanding. But then he starts acting out and doing stupid shit, and eventually his dad just calls him out and just says, "You don't understand, like." You're you're a you're a winner, and you right now you're acting like a loser, and you don't you don't you don't you don't you don't get how life is because like life, no one's gonna beat you harder than life. You're right. And you're right. You know what I'm talking about, and, and it's just it's such a beautiful thing, and it's such an amazing quote. It's such a, gr- a emotional time and a great just feeling in a movie because it's such a real. It, 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 one of the few movies that I really resonated with, and I love movies, but. I was like, that. No. that's exactly what it is because he's just telling, and this is a person he loves dearly. It's his son. He only has one kid. His wife is dead. And he's just telling him like, man, like you don't like life is going to beat you harder than anything that I could ever do to you or anyone else could do to you. And if you, if you just continue to let it, you're just going to stay there and it's going to beat you down to your knees. And it's like, absolutely. That's exactly what life is. You just continue to get kicked in the ribs over and over. And if you just lay there in that position, life is just going to keep kicking you there. And if you lay down, it's going to stomp you down. It's not going to stop. It's not going to stop beating on you. There's, there, you know, that's why people, so many people today want to be a victim. Well, we are three people that have been victimized, but we are not defined by the victim title. Exactly. I, I don't wear a shirt. I don't wear the scarlet letter. I don't wear, you know, I'm a victim on my on my chest. I am a victim in, in circumstances, but I will never let people treat me like a victim. Yeah, it's one thing, you know, get a shot in on you. Everybody gets a cheap shot in once in a while. Hey, that's part of life. That yeah, that's cool. Take and you don't have to fight every single battle that comes your way. That's the true nature of being disabled. Hey, there, there are certain fights I'd love to fight, but... I will get my ass handed to me. I, 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 I keep in shape. I'm, I'm still fairly formidable looking, but I am in no way. I'm a powder puff. I, I am, I am a, I'm a delicate little flower <laughs> that cannot kick my own ass. So I, I go out of my way to avoid physical confrontation and also goes against my spiritual belief not to engage in such things. So yeah. There are times I love to get in someone's face, especially some of these old grannies that, that <laughs> like to flip you off. But I'm afraid they're going to kick my ass. So Yeah. But again, back to being a porcupine. Like, they just need to yeah. know that you're a problem. They just need to know that you are more than what they – even if you, you aren't entirely. Like a puffer fish. Like, they need to just go, oh, shit, you're big out of nowhere. What happened? Like, they just yeah. need to know that, like, oh, okay, so even if I win, I could win this, but I'm going to lose an arm. You know, that's all yeah. it is. Like it because that that's a that's a whole thing. Like that was a big thing in like Viking culture is that when you presented a war with Vikings, you would say, "Okay, you may win, but you're going to lose a lot of your men." And that was something they hated. They didn't want to lose a lot of their people, so they even though they were barbaric and they would like to just run through your village and and tear down whatever walls and and own your women and all that. But if you present them with the fact that, "Yeah, we we may, you may beat us. You may do all the things that you sought out to do, but you're going to lose a lot of your men. Do you want, do you want that? Or do you want to come to some sort of deal here and some so, sort of solution where we both can make out and we don't, we don't lose anything. Maybe you don't get exactly what you wanted, but you get half of it. And so, you know, again, you present that with these people and you say, look, man, you may win. I don't know. You may lose. You may lose entirely. There's a risk that you can lose, but there's a there's a chance that you you may win, but you ain't gonna you know, win without you know taking some losses. You, you, are you familiar with Genghis Khan? With what? Genghis Khan. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, there's a quote that is attributed to him, and I truly hold this to my heart, and when, especially when they 
did what they did to Paige with the guardianship and the abuse. And, and he said, I'm going to push this quote, because God has, because you have committed such great sins, God has, God has sent a punishment like me upon you. Yeah, they fucked up in this place. The, the county, they, they hurt my kid. And there's another quote from Admiral Yamamoto at the start of, uh, at the onset of the attack of World War II when they were attacking Pearl Harbor. He's noted as quoted as saying, I'm afraid all we have done is awakened a great sleeping giant and filled him with a terrible resolve. Sure. Oh, yeah. They awakened a great sleeping giant in me and they filled me with a terrible resolve. And if they think I'm with just the, the fuck the government sign, if we're just getting started now, if they think that's enough to get us in Fox News and MSN and Yahoo and all the other major media outlets, just wait. This this is going to be a very interesting summer for us. This is yeah, exactly. the whole sign is coming out and it's going into a little bit more of an aggressive mode and, and letting him. It's not going to. We're not. We're not violent, but we are going to outsmart them. We are going to put it in their face, and we're going to exploit their weaknesses wherever they are, wherever they are vulnerable, wherever they allow us to do so legally and applicably. We're going to bring attention to our cause, and we're going to make sure that people with disabilities and they're not being taken advantage of with these loopholes like the guardianship. This is this is that's the root of our efforts right there, and that's what makes us who we are. For sure, yeah. Um, I want to start wrapping up here soon because, you know, this will go on forever. But I want to make sure that we covered everything with both of you um, because I I don't want to miss anything out just because, you know, we can do this all day and we we will continue to talk outside the podcast. But I just want to make sure we get both your stories in um, before we wrap up. Yeah, sorry for chewing your ear for so long. No, you're fine, was... brother. You're fine. Like I said, this is kind of hard for me at times because I just want to keep going too, and I, I have yeah, to kind of yeah. think about people wanting to listen to this, and it's like I don't really edit. I like to just let it go and be natural, and so it, it makes it hard times because you kind of you start looking at the time, and you're like, oh shit, like this is now because I've yeah. had a couple go over two hours. I rarely let it go, but it's like I get it. Like it's your story, and I, I can't tell two people to tell their entire story in in ten minutes. It's not realistic. I've yeah. I've tried myself on other people's shows and it's hard. So, but again, I yeah. just, I want to get the gist of your stories. I respect that. I, it's much appreciated. Yeah, of course. And again, we just met and you know, again, you're building <clears throat> a relationship and you just want to make sure people are taken it, care of. Communication is the key to everything in life. If you have something to say, say it, it doesn't matter what it is, sort it out later, but just get it off mm-hmm. your fucking chest and say it. And we can move on from there because if you if you keep if you keep each other guessing, we're never gonna get anywhere. Exactly. So, uh, do you have anything else to say, Miss Page? Um, not that I can think of. Do you have anything to say, Dad? No, no. no. Thank you for having us on your on your show on your yes. podcast. And it means a lot. It, us. it was a true honor to be on your podcast. I appreciate that. I I love her because it's like if you didn't know her, you would think she's being like really sarcastic. But I, I do know she's being serious, but it, it's why I kind of chuckle because it's almost like, yeah, it's not a real honor. It's like, yeah, I, it's I, a <laughs> yeah, that's what happens with the screen. Yeah, living in the valley. Yeah. It's all right. No worries. I, I, I know how to read into things, but it's funny because like <laughs> I because she said something earlier before we got on mic and it was just like, ah, it didn't sound as sarcastic, but I know that's not how you meant it. Yeah. See, the inflections, it's the valley inflection. The other thing, we, the people sound like the, uh, they, everything, they sound like they're a tough guy or they're from New York up here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or, they, or they, everything you say, it sounds like you're asking a question at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and that's, like I said, I have that with like the Philly thing. It's just, you know, people say, you have this accent. I'm like, I don't hear it. I just talk the way I talk. But, you know, it's, yeah. it's a tough thing to Philly. And that's. <laughs> Yeah, it is what it is, but that's where I'm from, and I wouldn't take it. I wouldn't take it back. I wouldn't change it. So, um, oh, yeah. but yeah, guys, I appreciate you both for being on. You know, I'm here if you need anything. Um, but yeah, like I said, this was fun, and I don't do too many of these with multiple people on because sometimes you, you just never know if people are gonna talk over each other. But we know Dave is the dominant conversa- conversator in this uh, in this particular incidences instance. <laughs> and uh, Paige just kind of sits back and jumps in when she needs to. So it made it easy. I'll jump in when I need to. That's, That's all right. How- That's all right. Paige, 
Paige, uh, with our different disabilities, like Paige is really good at helping me with the physical stuff. Her physical body is perfect. Eh? There's nothing wrong with her back or hips, which suits me fine because I can't, like I said, I can't take anything off the floor. But with her, with her epilepsy and cognitive issues that are associated with it, I, I can speak quite clearly, and that doesn't bother me. Yeah, you're like a double, you know, double threat. You're good together. That's what makes it great. It's such a great relationship beyond just the fact your daughter and father, and it's a good thing because you know you represent the good fathers out there because you know how many shitty ones there are. Yeah. Uh, but beyond that, like I said, it's great to just that you have this relationship, and you know, I'm sure it's hard for her because she's growing up and being an adult and probably wanting to date and all these things, and now you got dad looking over you. But at the same time, you both love each other and. You both have each other's back in, in, in multitude of ways, so it's really cool. She's free to do whatever she wants as long as she puts her health first. And beyond that, if she's not safe, if she's not taking her health seriously and putting that ahead of everything else, she can do whatever she wants beyond that. I don't care. Be yeah. safe, health seriously. That's awesome. Well, thank you, guys. Yeah. You guys are awesome. You're the best, Sam. Thank you. Anytime, guys. We'll talk soon. All right. Take care, buddy. All right. See you, Bye. guys. Bye. Hi everybody. It was a long one, but we are uh, we're wrapping up. Appreciate your time as always. I really do. I'm grateful. I know there's more listeners keep coming in all the time, especially people from my new job and um, just all over people I meet. To just will reach out and say I'm listening. It's like oh, it's really cool. So thank you everyone. Um, as I always, I really thank you all for being here. And just if you're struggling and please hang in there i hope any of these stories i don't care if it's one i don't care if it's me just somebody you can lean on and gravitate towards in this show and hopefully they can help you get through your times just something just to know so that you don't think that you're alone it means the world to me to try to help those people the, the people that feel lost and lonely and man it just I, I know that all too well and it sucks so much so please if you're struggling hang in there Find some resources or reach out. Uh, find me on at my blurred opinion on TikTok and Instagram. Um, if, if I don't, uh, if I don't see you there, I hope to uh, hope you hear me next week, and uh, we'll be here strong and as ever. So, uh, bullets here sleeping, so he's not gonna do make any noises. So sorry, but uh, sorry, but anyway, guys, have a good night, good day, wherever you are, and uh, we will uh, we'll talk soon. All right, bye, guys.